I haven't heard anything from Noah. I don't know if he's I'm assuming he's gonna be there. It's a minute and a half. Hey everyone, I have 6.45 and I will call to order the meeting of the month's report of zoning appeals. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Mr. Randall, please call the roll. Vince Chair and Mayor. Here. Brad Hemingway. Here. Brian Speck. Present. Uh, Roland Ratman is absent. Daniel Buxer. Here. And I'll note uh, Council Lee's on the and Melanie present as well. Thank you, Mr. Vanderwood. Next on the agenda is the approval of the March 14th, 2023 draft minutes. What is the pleasure of the board? I make a motion to approve. Mr. Speck has made a motion to approve as presented. Is there support? I'll second that. By Mr. Honeyway, thank you. Any question on the motion to approve as presented? Uh, Ms. Randall, please go ahead. Chair and Mayor? Yes. Brad Hemingway? Yes. Brian Speck? Yes. Daniel Boxer? Yes. Motion carries and the minutes are passed. The you know, preliminary hearing this evening is BZA docket 23-4, and the petitioners are requesting a variance from uh, various tables to permit the construction of a garage addition, which will increase the total number of garage spaces, spaces to four at 1621 Bay Um, Mr. Vanderwood, would you please uh, introduce this petition? Yes. Uh, as you noted, this is a uh, preliminary hearing for uh, development standards variance from uh, the zoning standard that limits the total number of garage spaces to four for a um, single family home, which is less than uh, 5,000 square feet. Um, by way of background, um, I'll just note the, the, the address is 1621 Day Lily Lane. Um, it's shown there on the screen. That's just a screenshot from the uh, Lake County Assessor's GIS website. Um, you'll note that uh, the house, I just can't see it from this angle, but the house currently has um, three garage spaces attached, um, which are accessed via that driveway on the, on the east side of the property. Um, the applicant is proposing to construct an additional one car garage detached um, located generally in the area where those two cars are parked on that image, if you can see that uh, right about there. Um, <clears throat> as uh, I noted in the report, there is a plan of survey exhibit that was provided by the applicant that includes a sketch that shows uh, the location of that garage. Um, there are also attached plans that show the design of the garage. Uh, a little bit of project history I'll give you here because you'll notice that uh, those cars are parked on a concrete uh, pad. Um, the project commenced in August 21. Um, the town issued a permit for the construction of a carport. Um, the concrete pad was poured and inspected. Um, as the construction on the structure was beginning, though, the town, um, town put a, essentially a verbal stop work order on it because it was determined that it was actually a, a garage was actually being constructed rather than a carport. 
um, and as you know from the report here, per the definition of a garage in the town zoning ordinance, which is a, if I can paraphrase, it's an enclosed structure for the storage of vehicles. Um, so after, uh, we'll go through in exhaustive detail what's written in the report here, but essentially the town met with the applicants. Uh, we were unable to come to an acceptable uh, agreement um, as far as how to go forward. Uh, after uh, some legal interaction, um, we did agree that the applicants would apply for um, a variance, development standard variance, and or um, an administrative appeal uh, about the definition of a garage. Um, they have applied for both. Um, we agreed that the town would process the and hear the variance petition first. Um, then depending on the outcome of this, hearing and this uh, this case uh, determine whether or not the appeal of the administrative decision would, would uh, be necessary. So as I've noted, um, and I think this board is aware, um, we do have a standard that in, our, in the Munster Zoning Code, Table 26-6.405.8-2, uh, which says that um, for residents with less than 5,000 square feet of living space, um, there's a maximum of three car, three car spaces, three garage spaces, um, which can be a combination of attached, detached, or a combination of both. Um, so the petition tonight, as, as I noted, is simply to uh, request a variance to allow four garage spaces on a house that is less than 5,000 square feet. Thank you, Mr. Vandal. Before we introduce the petitioner, are there any questions to Mr. Vandal from the board? Hearing or seeing none, is petitioner present? Please, petitioner approach, present. please approach the podium. Introduce yourself, uh, state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name is Randall Parr. I represent uh, the petitioners, uh, Srikam and uh, Sandara uh, Ravindran, and uh, they are the homeowners at uh, Lily Lane, and they are the uh, uh, the persons who have met with the uh, members of the planning commission and were also plaintiffs in a case that has been since uh, dismissed, at least for the time being. We, uh, we agree with uh, largely everything that uh, Mr. Vanderwood said uh, uh, with the uh, perhaps some amplification on a little bit of the history of the case, and I, I will just mention one thing, and that is that the uh, application that was filed uh, with the uh, Planning Commission uh, for the issuance of a uh, building permit uh, clearly said that this would be an enclosed structure, an entirely enclosed structure. Uh, it was not mentioned on the on the application for the building permit whether or not it would contain or be used for storage of cars. Uh, and so the the issue of the interpretation uh, and meaning given to the wording on the application was a pretty good sized part of the uh, matter that had been filed for uh, the judicial proceeding. Uh, but uh, we have since uh, determined that it would be, uh, for the time being, the better course of action to proceed with a, a variance uh, on this matter. And so, uh, pursuant to the to the application, which was approved and the building permit, in fact, issued. Uh, the Robindrons began construction and they had a, a the concrete pad poured on the property. Uh, subsequently, they had materials delivered. Uh, those materials uh, are basically steel and uh, the, the dimensions are something like 27 by 27 or something like that. And uh, one of the inspectors drove by one day and, and saw some roll up type garage doors similar to what you would see on many used store type places and 
issued a verbal stop uh, work order. And then where Tom starts talking about the sequence of events is pretty much accurate. And so they just want to have trust. Now we are aware of the uh, of the uh, square footage requirement of the 5,000. They in fact have uh, as part of their house, a three car attached garage. Uh, this structure that they uh, obtained the, the permit for would have uh, technically the capacity for more than one vehicle, but, but what they mainly want this structure for is to store anything and everything. Uh, there's some law, I'm sure, that like a Murphy's law that however much storage space you have, that's how much you'll actually use in your house. So that's why some people don't get basements. That's why some people don't uh, want attics and that sort of thing because they just know they're going to accumulate more things, which seems to be the way that pretty much everybody works. So there would be storage in this for any thing, including lawn equipment, whatever. Um, but it could be used potentially uh, and probably would be for storage of um, a motor vehicle. Uh, and ideally, they would probably like to have it to be able to store more than one motor vehicle, knowing well the code permits for a 5,000 square foot house up to four. Okay. Now, their house square footage is 4,747. <laughs> Square feet, so they're pretty close to the to the five thousand. In fact, uh, uh, we are intending, uh, if necessary, to have a uh, an engineer re recalculate the square footage. I suppose that could go get one, uh, but we are within. What would that be? Four percent or something of the five thousand square feet. Uh, the dimensions of this of this uh, fully enclosed structure uh, would are no different from what a two sided structure would be, which basically is the uh, the definition of a carport. Uh, this is this was designed to be fully enclosed and was so designated on the uh, application. So the, the width, the length, and the height would be the same. Uh, the footprint on the property would be exactly the same. In fact, they've already put the, the metal studs in the concrete pad for the erection of this steel uh, structure. So that's already literally set in stone. Uh, and so what they, what they would uh, would like to do would be at the very least to get a variance of the of the code for the number of garage spaces to include uh, a, another garage uh, space taking it up to four and should the board uh, because of the circumstances of the case determine that the uh, structure could also be uh, used potentially for storage of another vehicle, that would make them very happy. But we also understand that that is a significant deviation from the code. So, uh, but it would, it would be an accessory structure that would have multiple purposes. And so we are asking this board to approve our petition for a variance uh, to accommodate uh, at least one more garage space, and that would be uh, appreciated. We have uh, pictures that we attach to our petition to show the configuration of the house. The setback lines were approved at the time the pre pour inspection happened before the concrete was poured. And so the setback lines from the, the adjoining property, all that is good. There's no complaint about that that I'm aware of. And we've done a lot of Leg work on this case on both sides. So nothing really changes except whether or not more than one car perhaps could be placed in this structure. So uh, and what, what 
the, what are the alternatives? If there is a car force, uh, one question I suppose that we should all ask ourselves is, would you rather live next to somebody who has whatever, multiple cars in a car port, which by its nature is a car storage facility, uh, and where you can see these vehicles in whatever state of condition they may be in, or would you rather see an enclosed garage? So in terms of curb appeal, aesthetic appeal, uh, we would submit that it would actually benefit the neighborhood to have uh, an enclosed storage space for the vehicles rather than uh, a storage facility of some sort that where you can actually see uh, the vehicles. This is a, a pretty nice neighborhood, and so we we think that uh, we hope the neighbors will agree with us that. Uh, that an enclosed garage would be something and that, that they would not object to. But this, this whole definition of garage and carport has been a big issue in, in this case for six months or something. Uh, maybe, maybe longer than that, actually. It has been longer than that. In any event, I, that's pretty much uh, in sum what, what we're asking for. We appreciate Tom's. Uh, uh, factual recitation of the history of this and, and what we would like to have. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions that any members of the board might have or Tom, for that matter. Thank you, Mr. Parr. Are there any questions from the board on this petition? Ms. Mayor. What is the, uh, the outer covering of, of this uh, structure? Steel. So it's metal siding, metal roofing? No, it's 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 a specialty company called Midwest Steel, and these are buildings that they that they put up. This is not a homegrown thing. This is a right. professional. What thing. is the what is the material that's that's cladding the building? It is steel. So it's like a siding. Is it a metal panel around the perimeter? Or is it brick? Is it? No, it is not brick. It is not brick. It's not. It does not have some sort of decorative siding or anything of that nature, it's right? Just, it's fully brick. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's just it's steel. Um, the, the, uh, the structure itself, uh, which was this fully described in the materials that were submitted with the application, mentioned what the building materials were, and up until somebody figured out that it was going to be fully enclosed, uh, there was no objection at all by the planning commission to have the uh, that material used on that footprint next to that house. Well, okay. I think typically carports are considered open air structures. Well, by definition, they are. Right. By by code definition, they are. Right. So so this being an enclosed structure really isn't a carport. Well, so the. Some of the, we'll say, differing interpretations of this occur because on the on the application for the building permit, uh, the specs were attached to the application, uh, which was submitted, and upon that, the uh, planning commission it, uh, issued the building permit. So the building the, commissioner issued the building permit based on the fact that he thought it was a carport. Yes, and so on on the Midwest Steel specification list, on the top of of the of the specification sheet, um, it has the words carport. Okay, but underneath that, and this is all part of our submission. Uh, underneath that, there are different boxes that that are checked, uh, which pretty unequivocally show that this was to be a fully enclosed structure. And so we have this difference of, well, do you look at just the title of somebody's letterhead, or do you actually look at the substance of what is actually on this thing? So and, if if the building commissioner had realized that it were an enclosed structure, 
then you would have needed a variance in order to do the project to begin with. I, I don't know that that's necessarily true. Well, you would have been over the five, or I'm sorry, you, you currently only have 4,700 square feet. Except it was not necessarily, and this is another potential difference of, of opinion on this, it was not necessarily represented. This was in fact going to be a garage. Okay, that was the interpretation given by the planning commission after the fact, after they issued the building permit. Okay, so before they issued the building permit, they, they for whatever reason, thought it would be a carport. So then it goes to maybe the next level of consideration, and that would be yeah. what's... You keep saying saying planning commission. Just to interrupt one, one second. Um, your reference to the planning commission should be more rightly in reference to the building department. Right. So the right. planning commission is a different yeah. government entity. Thank you. Thank so. you. Um, so there, there was, you know, the next kind of level up is just an accessory structure of some sort, a shed. Okay. And, and the rules for a shed uh, are not the rules necessarily for a garage. But it's something more than a carport. Okay. So an accessory structure or a shed is something that can store things. Uh, at some point, somewhere was mentioned that cars might be stored. How many, how often, for how long? I don't think it was ever mentioned. But so it was it was not a designation as a garage that was ever given by petitioners. Okay. But was the intention for it to be always as a garage and not represented to the building department as it was going to be a garage? What was the representation by the petitioner? Uh, well, according to their petition, uh, it was going to be a, uh, a structure and That is uh, in the materials. Yeah, some of the materials. Uh, the app in any of the application. Uh, when you fill out the application, do you write on the application it is a garage, or do you write it is a shed, it is a carport? What do you write on the application? They did not check garage, um, and, and if I recall, right, the garage would have brought a variance to the BCA right, right off the bat. Exactly. Um, so they they listed it as 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 a carport. So a carport is a roof on your side, basically you pull your car into. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, it is, except. No, except there's no upset. I, I, I've been an engineer and a, and a builder all my life. A, a garage is an enclosed structure. A carport is an open air structure to uh -huh. store stuff underneath it. Okay. Well, then what what would the board make of of the Midwest Steel spec sheet that specifically says it's going to be fully enclosed? We can't speak for the building department. Right? I can only speak for what is in front of us now. Right. And right now, you're asking for a zoning ordinance or change. Personally, if it's an enclosed structure, I'm fine with imagining this like a garage, a garage that's going to look similar to what their house is, not a steel building. And it's a, and as you said, it's a beautiful neighborhood. If I'm that next door neighbor, I don't want a steel building sitting next to my home. Yeah, like it should be it should be built of similar standards as the home that's on the on the lot. So let me interject here at this point. This is a hearing for a preliminary hearing. And I think we're maybe venturing a little too far down the road. Can we confine our comments to whether a preliminary hearing should be granted? Whether yes, public. Yes, public. Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Um, 
as li the liaison, I'm not a voting member, but I just had something dawn on me and this might save some time overall, but you said this is a detached uh, structure. Yes. Right? So has have you checked with the covenants of, of your neighborhood? Because I know in my neighborhood, we're not even allowed to build detached accessory buildings, even in the backyard. So if that's not allowed by your covenants from, and Tom can correct me if I'm wrong, but the building department will issue building permits for what is legal based on the town code, but a homeowner is responsible for looking into their own covenants in their neighborhood. So it, this may be, may stop it right there um, if that's the case. Right. What is it? I don't. Meadows. Meadows, Meadows, Meadows and George. I mean, I don't know. The Meadows are a little looser than some of the other. Yeah, some special. But I thought they should at least. Yeah, absolutely. If they don't. That's a fair. Is there an HOA within the Meadows? It doesn't matter if it doesn't, though, because it's, it's a fair point. It is a fair point. So, okay. Well, that would be something for them to look into. So, Mr. Parr, you know, you're asking for a public hearing, and it would require uh, providing notice, which has some cost attached to it. Does your clients want to hold off on doing that while they check to see if there are any covenants that would allow or not allow this project? So instead of the public hearing being a month from now, perhaps what, two months or whatever. Yes. Do you have a thought on that? So just look for a month or so. Is that okay? Yes, that's an excellent suggestion, and um, so that would give them time to check into that, and that's the. the good point as well that would be excellent and also if you could possibly provide the board the uh, copy of the application that your clients initially submitted to the building department yeah we do have that that's that's in the chat yeah. okay thank you and i'm sorry um, and pictures of what the structure would look like complete they would like to see that for the next meeting If I may just say one thing, there, there's been a lot of discussion tonight about whether or not it's a carport or a garage. I think for the purposes of this variance application, they're requesting permission for a garage. So irrespective of what was previously characterized as a carport or a garage, they're asking for the garage now. That's the very, that's the, the complication. So just keep that in mind, I guess. Thank you, Mr. Reckler. Just, just, just one question. Does it meet the square footage requirement? Does it meet the height restrictions of the garage and all that? Yeah. Okay. And no no issues like the lot coverage? No. Side yards? Okay. Mr. Wicklund, for the agenda purposes, do we need to continue this or just take no action? I would take, uh, yeah, I would take look. You've heard Mr. Wicklund, is there a motion to defer until the uh, May meeting of the board? Before we go there. Please. So uh, in that, what you're saying is that this is a, a garage request and we have requirements currently that, that a garage would be in keeping with the style of the, of the home? There's nothing in the zoning ordinance that would require that. Okay, but as far as like materials and types of construction, it would just be governed by the building code. So it wouldn't, it, there wouldn't be a requirement that it has, say, brick or vinyl siding as part of our standards. But, um, but a, um, a, an industrial type structure like this would be allowed in a residential area? It would be because, yeah, there's no material standards outside of the covenants. As, as well, how do we hold does the town hold those somewhere to keep track of those covenants? Um, typically, they're recorded with the plat, 
Um, but I don't know in this case. Generally, we don't enforce them because um, some, as Mr. Fox has said, some communities have kind of like a formal HOA that monitors those things and making sure that those standards are being kept, and others don't. So we don't, because there's a private covenant, we don't usually get involved in enforcement. Okay, is there a motion to postpone definitely until the May board meeting? I'll make a motion. By Mr. Speck, is there a support of that motion? I'll second. By Mr. Rappin, any question on the motion? Can I ask a, please, so, just a point of clarification. Uh, the board is moving to schedule a public hearing or you continue? We'll continue the preliminary hearing. To next month. Yes. Okay. So there will be no public hearing scheduled at this time? That's correct. Okay. And so that uh, that next date would be May 9th. That sounds about right. Is that second Tuesday, right? Yes. Yeah, second Tuesday. Okay. Any other questions? If not, Mr. Mangler, please call the roll. Chair and Mayor? Yes. Brad Hemingway? Yes. Brian Speck? Yes. Robert Rappin? Yes. Daniel Daniels? Yes. The motion carries. Uh, Mr. Parr, please advise your clients to. Uh, Work with you to provide the necessary information, and we'll see you back next month. And, and again, to, just to verify that, that would be uh, the, considering what Tom said, would do you still want a copy of the covenants, even though the board? Please, please, yes. Okay. And then also pictures of the completed structure. What is what they're proposing? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Moving along the agenda, we have a public hearing. He's a 23-02. HB Munster Investment LLC seeking variances, et cetera, for the Hyatt Place Hotel, 9420 Mr. Vanderwood, please. Okay, um, HB, HP Munster Investment LLC, uh, as you stated, is seeking multiple variances from the um, sign standards of the local zoning ordinance um, to, per to permit three non conforming signs. Um, Hyatt Place Hotel, which is under construction currently at 9420 Calumet Avenue. Um, you can see it in the image on the screen. This is uh, under construction at the Maple Leaf Crossing development. Um, <clears throat> the Maple Leaf Crossing uh, development is uh, governed by development standards. For the major leaf crossing development. It's a planned development, and so it has its own set of um, development standards. However, in this case, um, there are no unique sign standards. Um, and so, therefore, all signs in Maple Leaf Crossing are to be compliant with our current sign standards and our zoning ordinance. So, the applicant is requesting eight variances, and I'm going to just point of reference pull up. Signs themselves. Um, can I interrupt you for a second? Yes. It's the RVD. This has already been before us, correct? That's correct. This was uh, at a preliminary hearing in um, two months ago. Okay. And uh, it was scheduled for a public hearing last month, but the uh, applicant was unable to. Um, Notify the public in time for the hearing. So we got bumped to uh, this month. Thank you. So, uh, in keeping with our fashion, I'll just go through all of these, uh, these variance requests. But the first variance is from the uh, overall quantity of signs. Um, we permit one sign per facade for first, per first floor business frontage, um, the multi tenant building. Uh, which means that a single wall sign would be permitted on the first floor of the north elevation, which faces Maple Leaf Boulevard, and a single wall sign would be permitted on the first floor of the south elevation, uh, which faces kind of like a public way. And so the uh, the variance here is that the applicant is also proposing to install a sign, uh, a wall sign on the east elevation facing Calumet Avenue. So you can see that would be this sign. Um, second variance is from the additional standards section, which states that um, 
Central Eight signs are to be applied to the first story, um, and they're proposing a wall sign on the north side to be installed on the fourth floor. This is the south side, but basically the north side would look the same. Um, so they're proposing a, a sign on the north, south, and east sides on the fourth floor. So each one of those is an individual variance. Um, in terms of uh, the next variance is for area. We permit one and a half square feet per linear feet of facade or business frontage. So this sign here on the east elevation, um, if it were to be permitted, it would also be restricted to 116.78 square feet. And they're proposing a 129.91 square foot wall sign. So on the two pictures being shown currently, those are on the south and the east side? Correct. This is the south side and this is the east side. Thank you. Directly challenged. And that's the north, or that's also the east side, actually. And that's also the south side. There is one plan for the south side as well. So that's the south side. So yeah, the north side for the north side. Mm -hmm. Again, directionally challenged. Yeah, this one might be. So that would be the north side right there, I believe. Tom, could you go back to the previous one, the March one? So the one that's on the <laughs> south, the uh, the wood looking panels in the south, so the metal east. panels on the this, this east. east. What, what would that be facing? It would be facing the four story office building yeah. under construction to the east of the. Let me, here, let me just build that. I'll tell you what, in the next page, this might be helpful. Yeah, take this one. So, this is the, this is the highest place. This yes. is the site plan for Maple Leaf Cross. This is Calumet Avenue. This is Maple Leaf Boulevard along the top. This is the hotel. This is that office building that's under construction. So mm -hmm. that sign would be right there. Would be right here facing the office. The office yeah. building, right? It would be obscured by the other building. Uh, no, from certain angles, I would right. think it probably would be obscured by the building. Thank you. What's the next thing? Um, so again, uh, the next variance is for size. So for a lot with the building setback of less than 100. Feet, um, maximum height for a channel letter sign is 24 inches. And the applicant is proposing a wall sign in the north elevation with 33.75 inch tall letters and logo. The north side is facing Maple Leaf Cross, Maple Leaf Boulevard, I should say. Um, similarly, on the south side, again, um, restricted to 24 inches and then proposing 33. Five inches. And then on the east side, um, restricted 24 inches and then proposing a wall sign on the east elevation with a 40 inch tall logo. So that would be the, that would be this logo right here. And then finally, the overall height of a channel letter sign is 36 inches. Um, that would be applicable for this sign here, and then proposing an overall height of 74.625 inches. So, um, those are the variances being requested. I don't recall if we went over this last at the preliminary hearing or not, but There are some examples that we found of other Hyatt Place hotels, which are appear to be compliant with our standards. So I provided those in the packet here, but there are other sign types that are available to buildings in Munster that aren't necessarily wall signs, but can be installed above the first floor and can be taller and illuminated. Um, so, I'm just providing this as a point of reference. Um, from the staff's perspective, we think that there are sign types that are available to this building that could be compliant with our standards. Um, we understand that they have they have kind of a template that they've been given by Hyatt, so they're seeking to apply that template here. But again, 
uh, based on what we've seen in other places, we think that there are, are ways to, to meet our standards. Um, I provided a few bullet points that talk about what would need to be done to totally comply. And um, that would be eliminate the wall sign on the east side of the building, uh, relocate the wall signs on the north and south sides from the fourth floor to the first story, um, or replace them with a different sign text, such as a large projecting sign that's shown there. And then uh, they'd also be required to reduce the height of the letters and logos on the wall signs from 32.75 inches to 24 inches. Alternatively, they could change the sign materials from channel letters to externally illuminated solid lettering or static scan. So if they were to not use channel letters, which are internally illuminated, if they had just um, non illuminated signs, illuminated signs with external illumination, then you can increase the size. So um, all that being said, staff's perspective is that there are ways to comply with the standards. And uh, so we would be recommending not approving this. Thank you, Mr. Vanderwood. Are there any questions from the board to Mr. Vanderwood at this point? There's none. Uh, sir, would you want to state your name and address for the record? Yep, uh, Amit Shah, uh, representing East Street Munster, uh, and the first one coming in after me. Is there anything you, before we proceed to public hearing, is there anything you want to state other than what Mr. Kendall has already stated? No, I mean, I think it's okay. Please go ahead and have a seat then for a short time. Yes. At this point, uh, first off, Mr. Whipple, there was the uh, proper notice given. Yes. Thank you. You have proper notice. I will open up to the public. Any comment on DZA 23 002? Is there any comments from the public? Mr. Edward, do we know if the person online wishes to? He appears to be muted and not raising his hand. So I would. Thank you. Going once, going twice, going three times. I will close the public hearing. Sir, please return. Um, questions from the board? I agree with Tom Sutton. I think we should. Uh, Follow the science standard, and I think there's ways that we could we could make this work within our with our within our current ordinance. Scrabble. Are there questions? Have, have, I'm sorry. Please, Ms. Mayor. Have there uh, have you uh, reviewed the uh, the options that that Tom has provided? And, Dug deeper into making some modifications to your site package? Yeah, I mean, uh, during the uh, preliminary hearing, I was open to uh, suggestions from you guys, but uh, ideally, my wish would be approved as is. Um, a, a want would be um, a, a variation of what I want in this request. So, um, so at this point, though, you haven't gone back and, and made any changes to your drawings? No, I haven't made any changes until I get, um, like Scotty can do this. Um, ideally, I mean, approved as is, but uh, I, second option would be uh, uh, have an increased uh, size and do a backlit sign, which would be uh, approved under the uh, signage requirement. So there, there are nine different variances on the list here so i mean we could take them one at a time or or in bulk. i mean what do you want to do to, to reduce this i mean so I, i'm i'm okay doing a backlit sign which would be an approved uh signage for uh, your, your requirement is uh I, but ideally i'd like to keep the the size of the you're talking a matter of 10 inches which one is that in particular? The northeast and well, north and south, and then the east would be um, 36 inches long, so eight inches. I guess we're going to have to go one at a time here. So, quantity the applicant proposes to install a wall sign on the east elevation. So, so you're not allowed to sign on the east elevation. Right. Uh, Are you going to back off on that? Well, I mean, I, ideally, I'd like to, to sign up. It's a lot. It's a large area. It just needs kind of a blank area. Okay. Moving on. 
Uh, number two, applicant proposes that the wall side on the north side be installed on the fourth story. So you're allowed to have it on the first story. Are you going to move it down? No, I mean, I am um, okay to the back with trying to get approved on the board. So if you change it to a backlit sign that it can stay on the fourth floor, is that right, Todd? No. no. No, that's not correct. The only sign that could be installed above the first floor facade would be one of those um, projecting signs that are shown in the report. Uh, those can be installed above the, above the first floor. So if I understand this question, Sir, you well, you prefer to have the board make a ruling on your application as it is. Well, I need to get some sort of signage approved. Um, if you're not going to approve what I propose, then I would like to hear uh, options. So, Mr. Vanderwood has laid out those options. Uh, from, uh, from my conversations, I thought a backlit sign would be approved. Not illuminated, but a backlit. It would be solid channel weather with light like that. So, uh, what's the Springfield Suite signs? Are those backlit? Um, those are actually internal. The ones on the built on the walls are internally illuminated channel letters. They're like perforated so that they appear black during the day and light at night. And those are all within the size of the ground. We're looking at kind of small point. Look at um, and these here. That's a good question. Those are those were installed under the Centennial Village standards, which are different. So it seems right now the sentiment of the board would be not to approve your initial application, at which point you would then need to work with Mr. Vanderwood to come up with a plan that does conform to the town's standards. I suppose you understand the deep that's it. Yeah, but uh, from my conversation with Mr. Uh, Vanderwood, I, I thought channel letters are approved uh, as long as the back, back was not illuminated. They are, but not on the fourth floor. I mean, okay. so yeah, there's many different, I mean, there's a lot of different types of wall signs. Any internally illuminated wall sign is subject to a, a greater or a lesser size, maximum size. So, so for the smaller size on the fourth floor, that would be approved? No, the fourth floor is just off limits. So I'm looking for a fourth floor sign. <laughs> So if we if we go to vote and he gets denied, then he has to wait a year. So so if you don't want us to, to vote. No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, he can uh, right, but then he wouldn't need a variance though. Then. Right. right. So so somewhere between what he's asking for and not needing a variance is is a, is a compromise. But you need to present it. I mean, we could table this and then you can come back next, next month with a, with a real option. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what I was saying. I think if you look at some of the other hotels in the town, you can see the Spring Hill Suites has a sign that's up higher. They don't have three. You know, I, I think we're going to be understanding in some respects. We're not, you know, nine variances. That, that, right. that, that hotel, you can't read the signage at my time. It is. And so people are find the hotel. Yeah. Okay. What is that? It's one of the busiest well, hotels. I'm sure they find it. Right. <laughs> you can't read the sign. It's right. Point at the sign. You can't read it. I, I drive past. I live in Dallas. I drive past it every single day. I see the sign. No, you see the sign, but it's very hard to read. So I, I'm tabling it then. I mean, I'm not looking to get approval if you're not going to approve it. Okay. But you have to go back and put okay. something, up, you know, some options together. So, I mean, ideally, I'm looking for fourth floor signage, but I'd like to get whatever you guys approve uh, on the fourth floor. The first floor is not the fourth floor. But the ball's in your court now when, yeah. once we table this, and you, you have to put something together that yeah. you hope will pass. But can you verify the, from my conversation with you, that fourth floor channel letters were approved? Um, I can verify that, you know, it's not permitted on the fourth floor, unless it's a, it's a solid channel letter. Unless it's that unless it's the blade sign that I showed in the report. That's that's the only which is an internally limited sign, but it's a different sign type. So oh, a solid letter channel letter is not approved. Even though the the, the sign would wouldn't be light, it would just be a backlit. So 
something like a light happening on the first floor would be kind of things. Okay, what is the pleasure of the board? Do you want to make a motion to postpone that only until the new meeting or until such time the petition is ready to come back? I will make a motion that we table it at this time. Mr. Strength makes a motion. Actually, postpone the first table and just go away. Okay. Uh, <laughs> motion to postpone. Is there support for the motion? Second. By Ms. Mayor. Any question on the motion? We're seeing one. Um, Mr. Hamlin, please. Yes, Chair and Mayor. Yes. Brad Hemingway. Yes. Brian Speck. Yes. Roland Rathen. Yes. Daniel Buckford. Yes. Motion carries. Um, please work with Mr. Hanwood or his successors, and uh, we we'll hope to see you back at the future meeting. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have no findings of facts. Are there any other additional items for discussion? We are seeing none. The next regular meeting will be May 9th, 2023. And I'll entertain one last motion. Motion to adjourn. I disrespect. Any, is there a second? I get that. Yes. <laughs> and Mr. Hemingway, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned at 736. Thank you, everyone, for your time and participation today. I will not be saying that. All right, folks, let me call this meeting of the Munster Town Planning Commission to order for Tuesday, April 11, 2023. Please uh, set your phones out of stun. Let's send, uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Randwood, nice to see you. We call roll, please. Yes, Councillor Mellon. Present. Councillor Colbertus. Present. Rachel Brannigan. Present. Mr. Roland Rappin. Present. Brian Speck. Present. Chairman Baker. Here. We'll learn law approval of the minutes. We've got two from March 14th from the Planning Commission and also from the Plant Commission. Modification, motions, let's say. Chairman, I move that we approve the March 14th, 2023 Planning Commission minutes as presented. So motion on the minutes from the Planning Commission. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? See there none. Mr. Wicklin, are we still doing roll on everything? Oh, we are. Mr. Vanderwood. Okay, Councilor Mellon? Yes. Councilor Colbert? Yes. Rachel Brannigan? Yes. Roland Rampin? Yes. Brian Speck? Yes. Chairman Baker? Yes. One more, folks. Move we approve uh, the minutes for the Black Committee on March 14, 2023. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. And a second. Any discussion? Hey, Mr. Vanderwood, let's do it again. Councilor Mellon? Yes. Councilor Colbert? Yes. Rachel Brannigan? Yes. Roland Rathman? Yes. Brian Speck? Yes. Chairman Baker? Yes. Next up, preliminary hearing, PC 23-005, RXHST. Is that a word? Munster LLC rep for requesting approval of an amendment to the Lake Business Center planning and development to revise the site signage plan, signage plan for the Lake Business Center PD at 9200 Calumet Avenue. Mr. Vanderwood. Yes, thank you. This is a, a petition to um, slightly revise the overall sign plan uh, for the Lake Business Center PUD. Um, the applicant is RXHST Munster LLC, formerly CA Health and Science Trust, um, which is the owner of the east portion of the Lake Business Center shown here on this image. Uh, you may recall that uh, this applicant um, before the planning commission a few months ago seeking a PUD amendment to um, revise the site signage plan. Um, at the time, they had proposed a, a sort of a comprehensive wayfinding and branding plan for their portion of the Lake Business Center. Um, that was heard at the planning commission, given a favorable recommendation, and ultimately adopted by the town council. Um, after, <clears throat> excuse me, after that adoption, 
Um, the applicant came forward and said they'd also like to make some modifications to the two, um, I'll call them gateway monument signs, which are located at um, Braden Way here in Cranlin. I know it's very hard to see, but um, two of the signs that were kind of, as I said, the gateway monument signs, multi-tenant signs, um, intended to be sort of a, a gateway to the development. Um, because the, the sign plan as adopted um, is, is very detailed, including even the types of materials that are permitted for these signs, um, their proposal to change those materials has unfortunately triggered another amendment to the PD. Um, so what they're proposing to do, um, as shown here, is, is basically change the materials for these for the Lake Business Center text here located on top of the sign, replace it with a much more visible um, white channel letter sign that states instead of Lake Business Center, it'll say Mustard Medical Campus. And then instead of having the Lake Business Center branding on the uh, side of the sign here, it'll have the address 9200. And then um, in addition to that, these uh, tenant panels will be internally illuminated panels with white. So, as I said, it's kind of a minor amendment to the overall sign plan. Um, this is the proposal that's shown here in more detail. Um, but because, as I said, those materials are specifically spelled out in the adopted ordinance and development standards, change the only way to modify those is through an amendment to the So, what would they would be seeking at this point would be a favorable recommendation to the council. To further amend site sign plan. Okay, thank you. So through all those pages, the only thing they're looking at is just the two monument signs. Correct. So what we're looking at here is what the, the existing monument sign on the left and the new one on the right. They look the same, but help me with that, please. So they look very similar. The sign itself is, is the same, but as I said, the materials for those letters and the illumination of the sign is specifically detailed in the PUD ordinance. And because it's it's like any other um, like any other sign standard in our zoning ordinance, um, you have to comply with it unless you proceed by the variance. In this case, um, we prefer not to grant variances to PUDs. We prefer to amend the PUD such that it's um, compliant with whatever they're proposing. Thank you. So it's just the um name of the development that's illuminated, not the individual tenant signs. No, it's the individual tenant panels. They'll have a, a metal face with a clear lettering that'll be internally illuminated. So is it your understanding when they switch tenants, are they going to have to take the whole panel down and put it up, or are they going to scratch it off and put something else up there? Um, they would have to replace the tenant panel, yeah, because as, as stated in the sign plan, it's a routed aluminum, it's a routed panel. So, yeah, it would have to be replaced. Thank you. Any other questions from the board for Mr. Vanderwood? We're looking to schedule this for public hearing. And also, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, the applicant is here as well. Sure. Sits with the board. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to set this for public hearing. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Is there none? Mr. Vanderwood? Councilor Mellon? Yes. Councilor Colterides? Yes. Rachel Brannigan? Yes. Roland Rathman? Yes. Brian Speck? Yes. Chairman Baker? Yes. Thank you. Moving right along, we have a public hearing for PC 23-007, Town of Munster Parks and Recreation Department requesting approval of a development plan for a new pro shop building and a cart storage bar at 1005 South Centennial Drive. Sounds like we're golfing, Mr. Vanderwood. That is correct. Um, and I'll just note that I uploaded some additional, more detailed materials that I received um, to the agenda page um, this afternoon. And uh, those are shown here. It's uh, a more detailed uh, drawing of the site plan that includes dimensions and um, some more uh, and a landscaping plan and a compliant lighting plan. 
So those have been added to the agenda page and they're shown here. Um, the Department of Parks and Recreation is, uh, as you know, um, no longer able to use the Centennial Village Clubhouse. Uh, in order to uh, maintain operation of the golf course, they need to build a new car storage barn and a new pro shop. So that's what they're proposing to do here. Um, our zoning ordinance does require that any uh, building, even a government building, um, be submitted to the Planning Commission for review and approval, um, just to ensure that they're meeting the development standards of the zoning ordinance for a civic district. So that's why the building is, that's why they're here tonight. Um, they have advertised this as a public hearing, so there's an opportunity that there will be an opportunity for public comment. Um, uh, I'll just say that we, in a civic district, the standards are fairly flexible so that we don't have a lot to review on it. Um, but I'll say that um, the building materials and construction, this, you know, this might be better just to look at some of these renderings. Um, the building materials and construction are intended to match the existing buildings on the site, um, constructed of brick, metal, and timber, and therefore compliance. A uh, landscaping plan has now been provided and it appears to be um, compliant with our standards, which basically just requires foundation landscaping around the buildings. Um, that's shown here. This. Right. We didn't get this, correct? Not this particular. This is one of the one of the exhibits that was just uploaded. And this is the landscaping plan. You can see that they're complying with the standard to um, have foundation plantings around the entire building. Uh, in terms of stormwater, they're providing contention within the existing ponds at Centennial Park. A uh, photometric plan is provided and it appears to be compliant now because uh, the previous plan that was included in the staff report did not meet our standard for color temperature. It's been adjusted. Um, in terms of parking, um, they're not providing any additional parking and none is needed because there's an existing parking lot there. Um, and then just in terms of sort of the miscellaneous architectural standards, um, we did meet at the site plan review committee meeting and we reviewed all of the relevant standards which relate to facade openings, setbacks, roof pitch, etc. And um, found them to be in compliance, compliance with all of those standards. Well, so that's um, given that our recommendation would be to approve uh, the development plan um, subject to a final engineering and planning staff approval for engineering plans, uh, building elevations, landscape plans, and photometric plans. Okay. Again, our applicant is here. <clears throat> First off, any questions for Mr. Vanderwood and staff as it relates to what's been proposed here? Have you done any solar warnings in this area? Yes. Um, do, are they required to do a signage plan? Um, I don't believe they've proposed any signage. In fact, we haven't seen it. Uh, so there's going to be no sign for these big buildings? Well, there's an existing monument sign at, mm -hmm. at the entrance. What about the grade? Walking up that hill. Now this building sits. Is it going to sit with the facade and how is it facing the parking lot? Like that? Um, so the is, that's shown here. <laughs> Especially coming up that hill this is a lot. The, this is the view from the parking lot. That grade is significantly higher than that. So that's a retaining wall, correct, on that parking um, structure on the right? That's correct. Yes. Uh, what's that material? It is not the existing. It could be extensions of the existing segment and retaining wall. Okay, I'm sorry, sir. Can you come up then if you're going to be the man answering and say your name and address to the record, please, and help us and tell us anything else that we should know, please? I'm Tom Coon, the owner and president of CFK Architects. The address of that is 619 West Central Highway. Okay. So the existing segment and retaining wall <clears throat> will be extended around the new cart storage building on the right. And uh, we have a little bit of a segmented retaining wall at the base, right behind the parking lot, 
so that we can get that landscape retouch for the pro shop, which is a whole lot. Again, what's that material? I mean, there's nothing really that large because that looks like what a 10 foot wall. There's landscaping in between them that will block the view of the site plan retaining wall. It's a concrete block material. Concrete block. So when I park the car, there's going to be landscaping between the curb and the wall, correct? And concrete block. Is that split block? Because Mr. Rabbit yeah, loves that. Split face concrete block. Uh, Got tie back system, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it matches what's out there now. <clears throat> as close as we can get. So there'll be different layers of landscaping you'll see behind those cars there on the right. That wasn't included in the landscaping plan. We don't match what's existing there now. Did you get the plans? I think it's photometric. Is it? That's site plan. That was plan remap, wasn't it? The update. Yeah, the, uh, as I said, there was additional uh, landscaping plan that was added this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Were you the architect for the first for the photo? No, okay. I was just curious. I didn't know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to play a So, Mr. Cole, yeah. can you can can the can the public get between the cart and the cart barn and the retaining wall? Yes. If you look at the site plan, yes, yes, we're we're extending the path behind the cart storage building. That's why we need to. This is the cart. This is the the path that's going to wrap around the building here. Okay. Okay. So, so sidewalk takes you to park you zoom out a little bit to right. show the whole thing if you got another plan. So how are we protecting the public? Because they sometimes have challenges at the golf course from going over the side of that retaining wall if you have a path right next Still to it. Still be landscaping there, a flat area. Landscaping. Landscaping's got to be below the, 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 the this, this is the rerouting of the path. The path currently goes through here. Right. So we're going to reroute that right. back here. So when you're doing that walk from how I come up from the parking lot, mm -hmm. my question is, right. if I look to the right back towards the old building, how am I going to not fall off that wall? Wh which wall? This one here? The big retaining wall that's 10 feet high. These are these are uh, tiered retaining walls. They're only oh. three, three or four feet tall. Okay. And there's landscaping in between. Uh, good to know. Sure. Yeah. So this is the path from the old clubhouse, which is over here, up the hill. Sorry about that. So there's no fencing or, I mean, railing from the standpoint of having the, somebody on their bike or somebody else at the park having a challenge. What we're, trying, what we're trying to do is have that at grade. The top of the, so I don't, I'm not sure. Mac, is this a retaining wall right here on the down, downhill side? Yes. Maybe you look at a railing if, it's, if there's any kind of drop off there. So we don't have really, okay. And then the lighting, I mean, I see the photometric. Is there anything other than the photometric I have on an old one as far as where the actual locations of the fixtures are going to be along the paths? Those are bollards right here. So yes. these, these are these are ground mounted bollards along the the access here. Right. Yeah. And then what? And then we have a building mounted lighting as well. And these are bollards. Okay. What about on the path we're talking about where I'm falling off the thing to three feet? There's no lighting. Either. No lighting. No lighting and no fence. No, not right, right now. Railing. Uh, okay. Well, looks like we've got some lighting on the back of the building. Right back. We do have some lighting on the back of the building. You can see the, the photometric shots there. It looks like though, though that there are like walkways and there's ledges. It's not just you're going to fall off. It looks like the retaining wall goes over the walkway up higher. Yeah. yeah. I'm just if asking if what's the height at the view of it, you know? What, what's the finish on the top of it? Am I going to sit on it? Did I do not sit on it? I'm worried about you. you want to sit on it? You can. Somebody's got to worry about falling off there. I mean, is there a liability issue here? I mean, there's a liability issue here. So I absolutely am worried about it. 
if needed, we will, we will provide uh, fall protection if there's a fall protection issue. No, I just want to know what the design is. It, it, you might have it already, but you're not answering, so I'm not so sure. So right now I'm thinking it's great. I'm not sure either. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So you, it'll be covered right here. Yeah. And there is a picture that shows us. Let's see. It shows me, uh, there's no drawings. It's just renderings. I, I don't know. I've done this for a while. I see renderings, and it doesn't look like the rendering after it's built. No, I'll keep going. But yeah, there's a wall. Yeah, there's a wall, so you can't fall off. That's how it's wall. Be about three feet. I don't know. I wanted to tall, so whatever the code is, and not falling off. No, I think you raise a good point, and I mean, oh, come on. I don't raise it. well, one of the things that you said is given some of the lack of detail on some of these plans. Um, you know, that's why we have the condition in here subject to if you need planning set approval or final engineering. And I'm, but I'm glad that you raised that as a concern because that will bring this to our attention when we get that final review. Will you make the walls tall enough that you can't skateboard off them? Oh. Um, <laughs> how tall is that? I don't know. Yeah, that's my that's a skateboard part right would be to have, a, to have a landscape area between the path and any kind of fall off point. So it's not a walker or so much, it's a landscape surface. And then, you, then you'd have a drop just to four feet. Makes sense. No landscape area, no other drop in there. So right. we can further that develop sense. that. We're not going to create those safe conditions. Trust me. Yeah. I'm perfect. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this this is going to seem really nitpicky, I'm sure. But like when I look at, so the siding is similar to what, or is it? It's the same as what's on the clubhouse now. Well, it, it, it more matches the building up on top of the hill. It's a metal siding and, and, and the... stone and brick. Right, the current clubhouse, right. And and the building up on top of the hill there. It's more okay. metal siding, the concrete block. There's a little bit there with the ball off. Oh, the ball off. Well, we, are, we are mimicking the materials that are on the club, on the existing deck of the facility as well. Okay, in, um, because what's What's throwing me off a little bit, and I don't know, Rachel, maybe you'll usually be kind of see this too and rolling, but on the Centennial Clubhouse building, and I think the contrast between the brick, there's the lighter brick and the and the stone, but the lighter brick with that, with more of the maroon paneling, this, I don't know, seems, it, it doesn't read as well to me. I mean, I'm not saying I don't like the building itself. It's just that if you take a look, Mark, do you know what I, I put you on the spot? Yeah. The, our park director's here too, but um, it's just lighter. So that contrast between the purplish or the burgundy and then the, the wood accent stands out more as well. Could you possibly look at another, you know, a lighter color of bricks to kind of, because it, yeah, it we looks. we can look at those options. And I think the, uh, the, the new pro shop is a little bit more detailed than the uh, card storage building. It's still the red. It's it's the red and the burnt. It's just it's breaking. I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? The stone on the clubhouse is a lighter color. Yeah. And yeah. there's a so one. So you don't like the stone in the would you rather have a different color of the red? Or like no, the red's fine, but even if, if you look at um if you look here, so there even if that was brick in that color. What did you say? We could look into putting some stone up to the water table or the bottom of the windows to change it, mix it up a little bit. Yeah, or even if it just wasn't that red brick, that red, it just yeah. doesn't, aesthetically, I don't think it's as appealing as what that is. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. It looks like a farmhouse. Or, yeah, right. Pardon? It, looks like it looks like a farmhouse. Currently or back then? Or no, the new one. The new one. The new one. Yeah, but so if you look from a distance, if you see what Centennial Clubhouse looks like from a distance, it's just it's just a little it's softer. It's, it's softer, not. yeah. It's, there's something instead of looking kind it's of monochromatic. Right. Yeah, you know. So. Colors. I like yeah. the farmhouse style. But Who's driving here? Who's driving? I don't know. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to give you all. I'm trying to give you all something. 
he was getting married. <laughs> Just jogging your memory for what the existing stone was. So there's more white. Is there no white on this tour? Like they see there on the small picture in the right corner of the building, the existing building. What's that white material? Is that stone? Part of it. Brick. Brick. So you're matching that brick. Now in the current uh, images, it shows a red brick. Okay, so you're not matching the existing buildings. We can mix it up a little bit. And it shows up like a brownish red brick. And I assume the garage drawers would be a bright white garage drawer, It'll probably match the colors of the you other get a the color you're going to take out. Wow. I mean, if, 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 if a private came out here, we'd kick this. The original clubhouse had a bunch of the wood panels yeah, and it's with the stone and the Right. Yeah, Which I would assume you want to try to stay away from at least the wood panel because that's probably a pain. Yeah. We do here. have some uh, wood exposed on the uh, car storage building and the, and the entryway to right. the right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Which not... softens up that whole look with that lighter. Yeah. Dark, so this is darker from the brown brick and the stone. Here's the brown brick. This is stone. And this then you get the brown brick again, and then you get that this is the wood. There, You'd there. be better off mixing up with the brown brick and the stone, so everything yeah. got all red with the whole roof and yeah. everything else. I you know, so. I think with that. it matches the other building. Yeah. I like the driving range with the cover and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Questions for Mr. Clone? Okay, thank you, sir. So this is a vote, right? No, it's a public hearing. So next up, we're going to open up the public hearing. So if anybody would like to comment on what you've seen, please come up to the microphone and help us with this, please. Please. Going once, going twice. We'll back to the board. We have a comment, Mr. Rappin. I commented on fine with the project with the correction you talked about making oh, sure right. public safety regarding the walkways and railings. Obviously, you want to be code. Um, I, I would vote to approve it based on the recommendations we made, making the, the brick and stone match the existing building as well as as well as obviously trying to match the garage door and everything color wise to flow with the existing building. So is that be my motion? That, that was a motion. Oh, that would be my motion. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you want me to go through one more time? Again? I think we should have uh, Chairman Baker Manderson here. That there is yes. uh, someone on the Zoom here with their hand up. I see. Oh, okay. So All right. Reopen that public hearing. I'll reopen the public hearing for the Zoom person with their hand up, named Teresa Martin. Please. Thank you. Address. Um, what makes it so that this building won't sink like the? Yeah. Uh, your name and address for the record. Oh, Therese Martin, 224 Belmont Place in Munster. Thank you. Yes, uh -huh. So is it because this is built on a slab that it's not going to sink like the clubhouse did? Where it's unusable? So far, did you so more you found a bedrock. Uh, part of the project will entail this building being built on structural steel piles that will support a structural floor slab and all uh, of the structures we're proposing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is that it, ma'am? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes. All right, I'll, close, I'll, I'll close the public hearing again. There isn't anybody else out there. No, mm -hmm. no. Okay. And bring it back to the board, Mr. Rapp, and you seem to have a a uh, motion? Yeah, if I'll make a, I'll, I'll restate the motion. I'll make the motion to approve this, uh, this, these structures based on meeting the code for the railing and sidewalk for access and egress, as well as uh, matching the existing building materials that are shown that are on the original centennial park <coughs> in drawings. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. And a second. Any discussion? Mr. Vanderwood. Councilor Miller. Yes. Councilor Cole Grace. Yes. Rachel Brannigan. Yes. Rowan Rathman. Yes. 
Brian Speck. Yes. Chairman Baker. Yes. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, next up, findings of fact. Uh, Mr. Wick, would glad to do each of these individually. You can do them. Any way you want. All together. <clears throat> All right, we have one, two, three, four findings of fact. First one is PC 22-023 OKW Architects. Second one, PC 23-001, the Community Foundation of Northwest Indiana. Third one, PC 23-003, Community Foundation of Northwest Indiana. Fourth is PC 23-004, Linda Twame. Sakatumi. How do you say it? Tumi. Tumi. Oh, it just like phonetically sounds. Uh, I like that. I thought the T was silent. Uh, so does anybody have any particular comments, motions on each individually or as a grouping? What say you? Move we adopt the facts, the findings of facts as a grouping. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Second the motion. Motion and second. Any discussion? Mr. Vanderwood. Councilor Mellon? Yes. Councilor Coldreyes? Yes. Mayor Tabranigan? Yes. Roland Rathman? Yes. Brian Speck? Yes. Chairman Baker? Yes. Next up is other business additional items 23 006. Linda Tume. Tume? Tume? Tume. 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 That was right. Uh, requesting approval of final plat of two mains addition to the town of Munster's consolidating two residential lots at 8345 and 8349 Cray Avenue. So this is different than we just did as a finding of facts. Isn't that true, Mr. Vanderwood? That's correct. You just approved the findings of facts for the preliminary plat. And this is uh, approval of the final plat. Um, the preliminary plat was approved by the plat committee without public hearing last month. Um, the application is to consolidate lots 26 and 27 and the creation of Gray Edition Block 1 coming on to 8345 and Avenue. So these are two lots, each of which have a single family home on it. The applicant owns both and is seeking to consolidate them so that she can combine the two houses into a single house. Um, the plat itself has been reviewed and determined to meet all of our standards for a subdivision. There are no public improvements required because it's on the street already. Um, so there's no need for a financial surety or bond of any kind in order to approve the final plat, which is one of the requirements. Um, she has provided both a site plan showing the two houses combined as well as a rendering um, architectural rendering of the final product. Um, I'll note that uh, a condition of this approval should will be that there's an existing garage that encroaches into uh, the alley. So the plans show that that garage will be reduced in size so that the encroachment is eliminated. Um, but yeah. Does that need to be a condition of what's approved here, Mr. Vanderwood? I don't think it does because the, the plat will end up being recorded. So what we would likely do is we would just sign off on, uh, or we'd rather hold off on signing the plat until uh, we saw definite plans to, to build the house as proposed, because you also can't have two structures on a single lot. So that connection has to happen and then that garage has to be uh, modified. So we would just seek to hold off on that administratively until, until those things happen. So our recommendation is to approve the final plan <laughs> as, as uh, presented. Thank you. Back to the board. Any questions for Mr. Vanderwood on this? No. Mr. Chair, yes. first of all, I want to say it's a really cool project that you're doing in Munster. It's going to really make that neighborhood look even better. Um, I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Either not, Mr. Vanderwood. Councilor Mellon? Yes. Councilor Colbreis? Yes. Um, Council, uh, Rachel Brannigan? Yes. Roland Rappin? Yes. Brian Speck? Yes. Chairman Baker? Yes. 
Congratulations. Good luck. <clears throat> Next regular scheduled meeting is May 9th, 2023. Entertain the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Commander Wood. Councilor Bellows. Thanks. Oh, are we? Uh, aye. 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 Aye.